God of all goodness, we do not want to face all that is in our own hearts. We want to focus on the good, on the love, the compassion, the care, and then ignore the bad, the greed, the envy, the cruelty. But before you be God, we must face it. Forget all the ways we have let evil take hold in our hearts. Cleanse us. Help us face our own demons and empower us to live a Christ life. We have been disobedient to God, but we have received mercy. Let us live our lives as those transformed by the abundant mercy of God. You may be seated. Today's Old Testament reading is Psalms 133, found on page 570. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore.
king and the queen, what, what do we, when we think of a king, what do we think of? Where does he live? In a castle. In a castle. In a castle, right. And the queen lives in the castle too, and everybody uh, treats the king and the queen with the most respect and everything. They have a lot of, a lot of gold and treasure, right? The king and the queen, that's the way we think of the king and the yep. queen. And sometimes, you know, people kind of even worship the king and the queen. So that's what these chess pieces are, the king and the queen. But uh, we call Jesus our king, don't we? So does Jesus live in the castle? Does he have all kinds of silver and gold? Probably not. Jesus is a different kind of king. He doesn't live in a, a fancy castle on top of a hilltop, and he doesn't have a treasury that's filled with, with gold and silver, and that's not the most important thing of his king and his kingdom. As a matter of fact, the king, Jesus, does have a castle. You know where it is? Right in here. In all of our hearts. That's where, that's where the temple or the castle for Jesus is. Inside our hearts, empowering within us what's good and right and true. And so the things that honor this king are lots of money and lots of power. The things that honor Jesus are love and compassion and peace. Completely different from, from this king. But this, but Jesus is more powerful than all kings because he is the king of the kingdom of heaven, which doesn't last as long as the life of the king or as long as you and I live. The kingdom of heaven lasts for how long? Forever. Forever, that's right. So, yeah. so we look at this king and we think, well, that king is pretty powerful. But when we look at Jesus, his love and his power and his authority and kingship lasts forever. Forever. So the most powerful king doesn't live on a castle on a hilltop and have lots of gold and silver in his treasury, but is the king of love. That is the king of God's kingdom, which is, and his castle is in our heart, which uh, is a kingdom that lasts forever. So we want to remember that when we think about, about Jesus. He's our king, but a king of humility, a king of our heart and the king that empowers us to love our neighbors, just like the, the Bible tells us to. So we've got to distinguish between the kings of the world and the kings of our heart, right? Because the king of our heart is all about the love of Jesus. All right, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your kingship and your love and compassion in our hearts. Bless this time of worship and uh, your kingdom within our heart and within our congregation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. And I will miss you. I'll miss you too. All right, we come now to the place during our time of worship where we share the word of the Lord that comes to us today from uh, the Gospel of Luke. John, or Luke 20, verses 41 to 21, verse 4. The word of the Lord is before us. Then he said to them, How can they say, that the Messiah is David's son. For David himself says in the book of Psalms, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. David thus calls him the Lord. How can he be his son? In hearing all of the people, he said to the disciples, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and who have the best seats in the synagogue and places of honor at the banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. 
they will receive the greater condemnation. He looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. He said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more than all of them. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in all that she has to live on. Here ends this blessed reading that comes today from the Gospel of Luke. And it is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Let's bow our heads and give thanks to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, nurture our spirits as we hear the word of the Lord today, that it might be before us a rich and glorious blessing that we can share, celebrate, and be inspired by. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I am James. Now, I am not James, the son of Zebedee. No, no. I am the other James. James the Lesser. When I first started following Jesus, way back then, I became known as James the Lesser. And that name bothered me. James the Lesser. I understand why I was tagged with that name. I am smaller than many of the other disciples. And compared to James, I guess I have a less important role because I am not in what they call the inner circle. There was a time when that tag, the lesser, almost made me want to turn away from my allegiance to the master. But then, I learned a lesson that has made my faith complete, even if I am not John, uh, James, the, John the Beloved, or James, the Son of Thunder, or Peter, the Rock. The lesson I learned came from a most unlikely time and place. I learned the lesson because of the faith in one heart, who even might have been lesser than me. One day we had all gathered in the temple courtyard as we often did, and the master was standing in the area opposite the place where all the offerings were put into the temple treasure. It was really a sight to behold. Many people who were extremely wealthy would put lots of money into the brass pots that were up there for the offering. And you could hear the sounds of hundreds of coins ringing in those brass pots, <laughs> one after another. <clears throat> then I saw a short, older woman walking a little bent over from her years of hard work. She waited patiently in the line. She appeared to have nothing to give. But when it got to be her turn, she raised her hand, which had two copper coins, first between her thumb and forefinger, and she slipped those two coins into the pot in a way that went completely unnoticed by most. Hoping, perhaps, that people would not know the meagerness of the gift that she was placing before God. And after she was done, the showy offerings that others were putting in continued. But the master gathered all of us together. Immediately after the widow presented her meager gift, And that's when I learned the lesson that has empowered me to serve God with all that I am. 
In response to that lowly widow's temple offering, Jesus called all of the disciples together and said, Truly I say to you, this poor <coughs> widow has put more into the treasury than all of the others that we watched here today. Because they gave out of their abundance. They gave out of an enormous wealth. But she gave out of her poverty everything that she had to live on. She surrendered it all. Then I realized that James the Lesser could be a place of strength for me rather than a place of weakness. I am sure the others in our group learned the lesson that Jesus had in mind from the widow's offering, just like I did. As James and John witnessed the widow, widow give all she had, I'm sure that they realized the foolishness of the argument that they had about who amongst us was the greatest. And Peter, so concerned about what the shape of the new kingdom would look like and what his place would be in that new kingdom certainly learned a lesson of humility from this gift that this widow offered. I'm sure that in the humility of the widow's offering, Peter and all the others recognized the foolishness of the times when he tried to claim, when Peter tried to claim authority and strength all for himself. Instead of, as the widow did, <coughs> surrendering it all before the Lord. Often in life, people try to claim authority and strength that can only be given to them by God. But the lesson that I, James the Lesser, learned is that I cannot honor God by envying John, or James, or Peter. I cannot gain more of God's favor by wishing, or in fact coveting more glory for myself, or more glory for the name that I possess. If the poor widow that we witnessed that day could honor God with two small copper coins and a willing heart, then I, James the Lesser, could certainly honor God more than the others in only one way. Only if I give of myself, only if I give of myself the person that God created me to be, according to God's plan. If I give my heart over to God so that God can use me in just as grand a way as he used that widow who put in two small copper coins, that is how I honor God. I pray that I too might be one day empowered to give all that I have over to God. God can do so much more with my life than I can alone. That's the lesson that I learned from that widow who uh, silently placed her gift in the temple office. Thinking back to the lesson of the widow's offering, I realize that often I have been much more like the wealthy merchants, changing their offering, clanging their offering into the big brass pots so that all those around could hear and see. I've been more like them than embracing the humility of that widow that we saw on that day. 
So I've prayed since that day that God would empower me to have such strength that I, in my poverty, might give all that I have to honor God. John, the beloved, has a role in God's plan. Peter, the rock, has a role in God's plan. The role that they play is for God to decide, not me. God had a plan for that poverty-stricken widow. He, he used her two coins to change my life. I know that my life given in faith can honor God. My life given in faith is the only way that I can maximize the gifts that I can bring. If I wish that I was someone else or as powerful as someone else, then God's glory cannot shine the way that God intended that glory to shine through me. If I give from my wealth and make sure that the whole world knows about it, then God's glory will not shine nearly as bright in my life as if I would just give my life over to God. So I want to ask you, what lesson can you learn from a widow bent over, waiting humbly and patiently in line, rubbing her last two coins together, preparing to give her whole life's provision over to the care of God? I, James the Lesser, just as powerful, just as loved as John, the son of thunder, or Peter, the rock. But only if I give my life over to fulfilling the purpose that God has in store for James the lesson. Not the purpose of John, or Peter, or anyone else. I understand that in your community, you are always walking toward the cross. Just like we were. When the humility in the widow's heart changed my life and brought the glory of God into focus for me. So if I were you, I would pray that God would help you to find wisdom in giving out of your weakness and submitting to the strength of God's plan for each one of you. Two copper coins did not bring glory to God in the temple court of that day. It kind of went unnoticed. It wasn't the two it was the love inside the widow's heart. It was the faith in God's provision for her life and God's fulfillment for her purpose that changed my life and probably others. Giving out of your weakness into the strength of Jesus' saving love is what the glory of the cross that you're walking toward is all about. So, as you consider what it means to follow the Master, how is your heart? Is your heart full of self-importance and bold, confident, proclamations like Peter proclaiming that you will walk to the cross with Jesus even if it means dying with him or 
is your heart humble? Like the heart of this widow we have learned about today, recognizing that when it comes right down to it, you have little more than two copper coins to offer to God. Only by God's provision can your purpose in God's kingdom be fulfilled. Humbly giving your heart to the purpose of salvation at Calvary is what was in the widow's heart that day. So, I, James the Lesser, pray that my heart is of the same humble state of that will. How is your heart? Are you ready to give out of your weakness, out of your poverty, everything that you have, knowing that everything you have will so much more bring glory to God when His light is shining upon it? Let's bow our hands in prayer. Loving Lord, Lord of truth, hope, Lord of peace and all glory, place humility within our hearts that we might learn that lesson well and that we might celebrate our weakness as an instrument of your light and your strength. We give you thanks and praise now in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Let's come before the Lord now and sing the hymn number uh, 324. Open my eyes that I might see. <laughs>
He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge us the great and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We come now to the place in our time of worship where we prepare our hearts for the time that we spend in prayer. So we want to uh, keep in our hearts all of the uh, people who aren't able to get out the way they would like to uh, and who you know, aren't able to get here to this place to worship. Uh, Terry Vincent, Louise Green, Jackie Williams, Dorothy Gift, uh, Alex Strandgard, Barb Anderson, Joyce King and uh, Nidra Barrett. Nidra is uh, now moving into new perspective, room 235. I think the details are in the bulletin. So uh, compared to where she has been, that's a, a step forward for her. So uh, if, if you send her a card to, to encourage her along, I'm sure she would appreciate that. Beyond those that uh, we uh, pray for because they're not able to get out the way they would like to, we want to keep Joe Roberts, Robert DeVries, Dylan Preston, Pennon Peterson, uh, and Kenneth White, Vicki Blair, and uh, are there others? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, <coughs> open our hearts to all the wonderful blessing of your love, that we might all find your peace. We might all embrace your love. That we might all find that humility that James the Lesser discovered. So that we are more open to fulfill God's purpose for our journey and God's purpose alone. We ask, Lord, on this day that you would empower those who aren't able to get out the way they would like to. They might feel your presence empowering the gifts they have to offer. We ask that you be with Terry Vincent. Help him to see your light with each day that passes. Alex Strandgar, nurture his spirit. Help him to see your presence in the place where he is. Louise Green, just nurture her spirit that she might find joy in each day that passes. Barb Anderson, Help her to keep that spirit that has been in her heart so firmly through the years. Jackie Williams, we ask that you uh, nurture her spirit along that she might find your peace and love to move her days forward. We ask that you be with Joyce King, that she might know that you are walking by her side with each day that passes. Dorothy Gift, just be in her heart. We ask, Lord, also that you be with Nidra as she moves into a new place, that she might see your presence there, and that her heart might be guided according to your purpose. Lord, we ask that you be with Joe, Roberts, and Nancy as they continue to journey down a difficult path, that they might know that you are walking with them. Robert DeVries and Dylan Preston, we ask, Lord, that you would help each of these understand the blessing of your love right in their hearts and right in their lives. We ask that you'd be with Penny Peterson, nurture her spirit as she goes through these difficult days fighting the cancer that is within her body. Just give her strength authored by our great God. We ask that you be with Kenneth White, Hear our prayer for him that the treatments might do what they are supposed to do and that he might see a light shining on his path. Vicki Blair, we ask the Lord that you guide her footsteps too in the light of the Spirit's blessing. We come humbly before you today, looking at the events that are on the calendar, the assemblymen, the fall festival, the uh, or the pies and the apple, apple pie day. We ask that in these activities, we might not just do those activities, but 
that we might see opportunities to proclaim the Lord and to embrace the love and fellowship that is offered by you for each one of our lives. That our lives might be a gift unto you. We offer our hearts in prayer now using the prayer our Savior taught us to pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let us make our hearts ready now to dedicate the gifts of offering that come before us.
way this day that we might know your peace, that we might know your love, and that we might embrace those gifts you give, that we might honor our God with each gift that you give us this day and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.